What is going on, Reject Nation? We're gonna watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine today. I'm walking Season in. Season one, episode eight. Yeah, hot dog. Very excited for this, guys. Brooklyn Nine-Nine is a gem. Was in line last week when it comes to these temporary blocks, but always a crop of red clays. Right now, at the time of filming this, episode five and episode seven are currently the ones that are blocked with 60% of our audience. Those will eventually become unblocked. Every one of these has been temporarily blocked a few days after uploading. It's weird. I'm not going into a product placement thingy right now. I'm just, just telling you guys. <laughs> all right, that's the this situation. Is a just updating show. you guys. So that's why I really do appreciate everyone who has been following us over at our Patreon because this stuff really affects us. <laughs> Please go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe, click that notification bell, and yes, full length watch alongs are at our Patreon, and we cover many shows with the same tier. You get the option for reaction highlights and watch alongs at the same tier. Thank you to everyone who's been following us. And oh yeah, thanks to Pratham Jadal for editing these for us, buddy. The scent is too much. We gotta get those shoes out of here. How much time do we have? Scully ate his pot pie 30 minutes ago, so we probably got 10 minutes left on this nap. 12 if he's turkey tired. Tripped a fan. Ugh, it's trapped. Abort mission. I have an idea. Ha 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 <laughs> oh, 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 guys, guys, you gotta think this through. You gotta think this through. Poor Scully. I would love to try out one of those rovers and try on one of those suits, although I think the rover would be way more fun. Whoa, why are you here before me? Am I asleep? Is this a dream? I am early because Jimmy Brogan is here today. Why do you care so much about some <laughs> old reporter? Stacy Keach? Jimmy Brogan wrote The Squad about badass New York cops in the 70s. It's the best book I've ever read, and I've read 15 books. 50 books is not a <laughs> lot. Wait, you said 15? <laughs> Brogan, I am a huge fan of your book. Would you mind signing my copy? I'd love to. It's always nice to meet a fan. Those New York cops <laughs> from the 70s you wrote about were my idols. I mean, Gaminsky, Kavanaugh, Quigg. Those guys were the real deal. I once saw Gaminsky choke a hippie to death with his own ponytail. Illegal. Love that. <laughs> Illegal. Illegal. <laughs> He'll be observing the two of you on your internet identity theft case. I don't know. Logan's presence doesn't prove to be a distraction to you, for It's gonna be smooth sailing. <laughs> Today we're gonna work on our courtroom demeanor. Pass. <laughs> You're testifying in an aggravated assault case tomorrow. Why? I'm fine on the stand. Look, I'll make this real simple so even these dum dums can understand. Man did crime. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. <laughs> this is an important case. You need to do well. Fine, I'll take your dumbass seminar. <laughs> Oh, good God, why do you smell like an ashtray? Oh, sorry, Mom. It's the only way I can cope with the stress of the job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, yeah. oh, ew, ew. <laughs> anyway. Stupid. Well, you could think of the algorithm as a boot and the IP address to some poor slob skull, you know? We used to call guys who bragged about sitting around all day hair bags. <laughs> Except for Detective Finaldi. No, he had to sit around all day. A mafia thug pried both his kneecaps off with a crowbar. God, so lucky. <laughs> Do me a favor, wake me when your shift is over. No way. That is amazing. <laughs> if they like you, they'll trust you. Fine. How do I get these morons to like me? <laughs> Don't call them morons. Good instinct! <laughs> hey, don't be afraid to smile. And always make good eye contact. But don't stare at people. Yeah, you gotta blink. But don't blink too much. Or too fast. I think the bigger worry is slow blinks. Don't blink too <laughs> Please, can I jump onto a sweet mob-related homicide? There are no sweet mob-related homicides <laughs> on which to go. <laughs> Why do you idolize that man? and the time he wrote about? Because the 70s were amazing. I mean, everyone had thick, juicy mustaches, and all the clothes were orange and flammable. <laughs> Diaz or Santiago never would have made detective, and an openly gay man like me, I never would have been given the command. There were very few black detectives. Did I ever tell you what my first day on the job was like? <laughs> Hello, I'm Raymond Holt. Are you here to turn yourself in? <laughs> oh, God.
They were great detectives. Some of them were legit. Some of them were just broken drinking buddies. Sir, that is a brilliant idea. It wasn't an idea, it was a scathing indictment of your personal hero. Eh, six of one. <laughs> one time during a drug bust, he had one of his fingers shot off. He didn't even flinch. He just picked it up and used it to flip off every Puerto Rican in the place. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> How about another round? Are you kidding me? I want to hang with you till one of us dies. Here you go. All right. <laughs> uh oh. It's time. <laughs> Pretty hungover. Shh. Turn off your mouth, Siren. <laughs> Here are the texts I got from you last night. <sighs> Best night ever. Why scotch burns so good. Picture of you on the subway platform eating Chinese chicken salad with no shirt on. <sighs> We had an epic night of bonding that I will never forget. Do it! I believe in you. Oh no. Throw it! <laughs> I believe in you! Man, I wonder if Brogan's okay. He's 65 and drank two bottles of scotch. He might be dead. Morning, kid. How you doing? Oh, hey. Oh no. People might say that all the black leather kind of makes you look like an evil villain. Not me. I think you look like a sexy motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> like that Lady Gaga album cover. And Charles' mom donated some clothes. <laughs> oh, no. <gasps> Try not clothes. I look like Arsenio. What? So it's perfect? That's actually my wedding suit. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, but she looks good. Yeah. That's great. Perfect. You look beautiful. Oh. Very appropriate for court. My grandpa was an old school cop. This was his hangover cure. Raw egg yolks. <laughs> you look like a corpse we just pulled out of the river. Wrong. I look like a cool rock star who OD'd in his own pool. Big difference. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume you're not too hungover to do said work? Nope. It's like I never even drank. And that's not a hangover cure. What, that? Nah, it's just some protein for my guns. I drink one every morning before I lift. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. It's so good. You can barely even tell it's a chicken embryo. <laughs> you should drink it all. <laughs> yes, you should. Uh, Did that work? I have no idea. He looks so abused. I wonder if that was real. We're only tracking people who use the stolen cards. They might not be the same as the ones who stole them. Here, switch seats with me. Oh no. Oh no. Someone posted the stolen card numbers online from this IP address. Not bad, you found the pattern. All right, let's aspirin up and roll out. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Hello. Mike Halbrook, NYPD, open up. Put your head through the door. My head? <laughs> we got a run! Stop! It went into the air! Oh, it's loud. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah. You know, I was going to take him out myself, but ladies first, so. Relax, kid. Being too hungover to chase a perp? That's a classic old school move. He's gonna throw up on him. So many good quotes, especially about hope. Cops are usually afraid to go after oh. their captains like that, but you, sir, are old school. Oh, no. Jesus, no. Oh. What'd you do, Peralta? Detective Diaz, would you please tell the court exactly how you were involved in this case? I caught Mr. Ladd physically beating his boss with a fax machine. Most of his cheek was caved in. His head was basically a blood fountain. I'm sorry, is this amusing to you, Miss Diaz? Please. <laughs> Holt would rather I wear a tie than solve a case. Holt cares more about catching clerical errors than catching bad guys. He wasn't supposed to quote me. I was off the record the whole time. Oh, no. I'm going on the record. Jake Peralta can dance. I'll fix it. Brogan's a cool guy. We're friends now. I'll just talk to him. Awesome dude. Oh, jeez. I think you're nervous. Of course I'm nervous. What do you think was the problem? We just assumed you were a terrifying human being with a short fuse. <laughs> <laughs>
You just need to go to your happy place. What's that? Sounds stupid. <laughs> well, everyone's happy place is different. For me, I just imagine I'm slurping up the world's longest piece of linguine. Mmm, mm, pesto. Mmm, carbonara. Great. Now I'm starving. Oh. <laughs> Russian spa for men. So I read those quotes you sent me, but I was pretty drunk when I said that stuff. Wait, you said you were going on the record. I was clearly not in control. Yeah, maybe you should learn to handle your brown. Ew. <sighs> kind of feel like you're being unfair here. Feel like? Listen to her, Suzanne Summers over here. Talk like a man. All right, I will talk like a man. You got me drunk and took advantage of me. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you nicely. <laughs> Please don't print the quotes. And I'm telling you nicely, I'm printing them. No, you're not. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> hey, how'd it go, Brogan? Perfect. Except I punched him in the face and made everything a billion times worse. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did he really? <laughs> No, Ferralta. I think I know what happened. No one cares what you think. Mm -hmm. Your client instigated the fight. I'm certain. What's her happy place? I'm happy to tell you why. She went to her happy place. I know that, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? I was thinking that I needed to protect this precinct. Every time I think you might make a decent detective, you go and pull something like this. I thought I could handle my brown. <laughs> <laughs> Go home. You got the rest of the day to put your head on straight. Oh, man. You assaulted Jimmy Brogan. Yeah, but that caveman kind of had it coming, don't you think? Uh-oh. Oh, he didn't tell you. Tell me what? Never mind. If Jake didn't tell you, he must have had a reason. It's not my place. I'm disappointed in you, Santiago. I thought you and I were close. No, 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 oh. for it. <laughs> I know you're manipulating me. <sighs> but I love it, and I will tell you anything. No! <laughs> 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 For the record, I know that Holt is a stickler, but he's actually a really good cop. Well, don't worry about it. We're friends. You don't have to stick up for that homo. Uh... Oh. She just said that. What? Homo? Oh. Thank you, Santiago. That'll be all. Dang. Hell yeah. No <laughs> Peralta, yeah. <laughs> That's a cool reveal. Yes, you did it. They found him guilty on all charges. Huh. Well, his advice worked. There's <laughs> <laughs> an elbow left. In the middle of nowhere. Inside, it's just me and that stupid, slimy defense attorney. And I'm beating the hell out of him. I break a dining room table over his head. Then I rip off his arm <laughs> and shove it where the sun don't shine. Then I reach down his throat and shake his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and schedule you for a psyche valve. I owe you one, Boyle. Thank you, dinner. Tomorrow night. Oh, yay. All you can yay. Yes. Oh, my boyfriend's coming to. No. What? Good boy. The new face of the NYPD is perfectly embodied by Brooklyn's own Jake Peralta, who cowers behind his desk all day like the true hairbag that he is. There it is. The old guard would have eaten a guy like Peralta for breakfast and unloaded him by lunch. <laughs> you can ignore that garbage, Santiago. To me, Brogan wouldn't know a legit cop if he punched him in the face. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's making me miss the hot plane. Yeah. Three, two, yeah. one. <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. I love that movie. It's Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, this is the most God, what delightful a good show. show. <laughs> Why can't NBC Universal? <laughs> Why can't you Stop guys mess just... with our videos? Do you see the joy? <laughs> Are you trying to dismantle this joy? <laughs> Stop. Don't be Grinch's Universal. You let them go eventually. <laughs> I don't understand. Why the hassle? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, that's shitty chatty. <sighs> Yeah, I was really touched by that one. Yeah, that one was that one was awesome. And uh, 
again, eight episodes in and they just keep doing different things. Right from the opening of it with um, blowing, like the bookends of blowing something up and then blowing up um, Scully? The his shoes? Yeah, yeah, Scully's shoe. Yeah. 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 Not Hitchcock's. It was Scully. Yeah. yeah. Bl- blowing up Scully's shoes. And then even messing with like the POV of Boyles and the oh, Swox. <laughs> like this like, the super intense bit. Deal. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. That yeah. is so funny. I love that cold open. Yeah, that was a really funny ass one. But then um, this, this story I, I thought was so cool. Like it's a good story I thought they told mm-hmm. of, you know, that phrase of like never meet your heroes. And it, it gives you so much insight into um, Peralta as well. Like this guy who grew up, uh, like he, 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 he quotes Die Hard again <laughs> at the end here. He's obsessed with this book as a kid. And it's just like this over glamorization of the gritty, badass loner cop. Like yeah. the, how he wants to be. Like it just put his character even in that much more of a clearer perspective of this guy who wanted to be an action hero. This like I wanted to be the badass cop that I, I read about and saw movies on. And then he like the bits of when he's meeting his hero and he's just trying to like embody like a 70s gritty cop. <laughs> it's so stupid. But he looks like a kid trying yes. to do it the whole time. Yeah. yeah it's, it's hilarious ass stuff like coming up with a different name, rubbing this the ash on him, the cigarettes, <laughs> and just playing kiss ass and people pleaser to it uh that's it, it's a neat tale especially because it's it's it, it has like the consequences of meeting your heroes and like you know the idolization of who you might have idolized growing up and then how i mean in a weird way it's like it's something that's always been relevant but weirdly to to, to, to today's times i'm like damn it's probably even more relevant yeah, <laughs> when yeah, you absolutely. realize like man some people i really looked up to in the past are kind of problematic people <laughs> you know yeah well and then it makes you wonder like you know how many cops in our generation have been inspired by those same kinds of cop movies and books yes. and stuff like that because it is like a, a well entrenched part of our culture and whatnot and yeah i like the way that even though it does make for a whole ton of just fun comedy it also yeah it does feel a bit of a real learning experience and a real confrontation of the changing of time yeah and for a show that i understand from from what i understand you know at least does adjust to uh somewhat the changing climate of policing just running alongside the airing of the episodes like it's cool to see even in season one them thinking on that level sort of yeah of course I mean, even going to like Holt's past of, uh, not, I mean, even eliminate the whole fact that he was gay, just being a black cop in the 70s yeah. and how there wasn't many black detectives back then. Uh, it's, it's it's riffing on something, they, they make humor out of it, but it's in, done in a, in a pleasantly satirical way mm. where, you know, the show's not making... Uh, light of the situation necessarily, <laughs> you know. It's a, if anything, it's a it's a comedic way to bring some awareness to it in a very heightened NBC show fashion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I I really enjoyed this one like so much. Yeah, and, and I like the the storytelling on this one. I thought was probably my favorite so far in terms of just like just storytelling. I don't <laughs> often say that with Brooklyn Nine Nine using those specific words of. He's slowly, just slowly learning and realizing that this this uh, man who we put on this pedestal is just uh, it, this glamorization is not what he made him out to be. Mm-hmm. As it's slowly unraveling, the quotes about Holt and then having to confront him and being like, you know, you're like the coolest guy ever, but you're, I feel like you're being unfair mm-hmm. having that confrontation, and then watching the change of the kind of person that he really is like he's not like the cops from that he probably admired from those books you know mm-hmm. especially with that line about like whatever he says about hum- like homos <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah that. you don't have to stick up for that homo yeah yeah saying that um and then he punches him and I'm like damn that is such like a touching ass moment yeah. like, like the way how the punch happened you're like oh Peralta you're being so childish yeah. you're hitting him because he's not removing the quotes like dude what are you thinking yeah. and then to ha- and then a freaking he doesn't even tell Holt about what happens yeah and, and then Holt um you know, uh, sends him home but then to have that like ending moment during when the credits are playing and he's he has that line, like, he wouldn't know a legit cop if you punched him in the face. Just like, oh, it's so touching. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he didn't even, like, for also displayed a certain sense of humility by not showing 
by not telling Holt why he actually punched him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And for an episode that has so much about being on and off the record and quotes being, or, or context being misconstrued, yes. to have it come down to, yeah, an unspoken truth that then makes their bond as characters stronger. Like, yeah, it's surprisingly kind of beautiful for what <laughs> yes. the format of this is, and it makes all the prior jokes that much better. And even the, like, goofy cutaways of Hitchcock and uh, Scully be like, yeah, we were a Coke in the 70s. Yes. Or in the 80s. Or whatever, um, yeah. It's 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 like the natural thing you would want to do in a cop show like this is you know do something that harkens to that era. And I thought, yeah, like you said, it's it's like a really nice parallel set of stories. And and I liked what they did with uh, Rosa, Charles, and Terry too, with the, yeah. like, having to coach her through like how to behave on the stand and how to connect with people that way. And and uh, even though like you know the one side of the story has a lot more of that like cultural relevance. See, I thought they made for a nice two stories to tell side by side in a way. Well, I don't really watch a lot of, um, you know, I've seen it in movies and shows and they're like, all right, when you're testifying on the stand, let's go over this. Let's rehearse this. How, mm -hmm. how is it going to be? But they made something really, uh, yes, it's a comedy, but they made something refreshing about, um, you know, having to train yourself on how to be on the stand as a cop. Like, I haven't seen that. Yeah. 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 I've seen the rehearsal of what to talk about, what to mention, what to say, what you're going to say. Uh, but they didn't really, even, they didn't go into that. It was just more about how to... How uh, to present yourself yeah. <laughs> as a cop on the stand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and even, even we get nervous. And I love that, even that bit of like, what did you guys think? Like, it's another great character beat of like, what did you think was going on with me? I'm nervous. And yes. they're like, oh, damn, we didn't realize that. And you can totally see why, but also it makes perfect sense that she might be nervous. And yeah, just the, the watching her go into her happy place when it happens was such a wonderfully played moment. Like that trans transformation in her mood and her just physical quality at that moment. Yeah. Was, yeah, really nice. And you know what makes it so, um, uh, like, I, I know the feeling of being younger and, and more, like, like more mature in the sense of when you're when you're talking with someone you admire, you look up to, you become such a yes man. Yeah. And like, you just you just feed into like whatever you think they're gonna nod their head at or laugh along with you at, whether that's something revealing or talking shit. You know, I, I know what it's like to be that person. And um, what what's so gratifying about the punch moment? Like I'm so impressed with that because I thought it was gonna be he insults Amy or says something sexist about her. That's that's what I thought he, it was gonna be. Mm. Um, I didn't realize it, it was uh, gonna be that. So what makes it refreshing is that he, he was originally going to him because he talked so much shit on Holt as he was drunk. Yeah. He made all these cracks about him that were were so insulting and, and he wanted to protect him and, and protect the department. And you're like, oh, it really comes across like he's going after Holt and he doesn't like him. Mm -hmm. But then the fact that he stood up for him, that he punched his, his childhood hero mm -hmm. for insulting him. like For truly it, really, insulting yeah. him as a person and not yeah. just talking about his behavior. Shows work, that he you know? really likes and cares about Holt. Yeah. You know, like that, 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 all that other yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's why I thought it was so, uh, that's why I was so touched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I like kind of moved me to tears when we were watching it. Because I was like, that's a beautiful... <laughs> I just, yeah. I didn't, the last thing I expected was to get any tad bit emotional over a yeah. situation. It's just so sweet. It's, it's so, so nice. heartwarming. Yeah. It's so nice. It's the most it's lovely you, punch. making me miss you yeah, right now. Yeah. Because it's, yeah. just so, it's just so touching. Because yeah. you root so hard yeah. for them to, to, you know, get on the same page together. And every little, like, they, yeah. that is something yeah. about them. Is like, as much as it's fun to watch Peralta and yeah. Holt be foils for each other and to aggravate each other, you really, they're good at making you really want them to, you know, have that familial love. I mean, know? for him to say, like, every time I think you're this close to being a good detective, like, it's yeah. it starts becoming like a cop drama thing in a way. Yeah. 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 Uh, like, everything I think you're, you're this close, oh my god, I got all this ink all over my hands, I didn't realize. Oh, oh, that's dude. what happens when you play with the ink on a pen. <laughs> Caught you black-handed, G. Uh, yeah, that was probably in this video too. But yeah. yeah scrape that off, yeah. What, um, what uh, who were we just talking about? <laughs> we were talking about how it started to feel like an actual cop drama at that yeah, point. Because yeah. he was saying, you, just when I think you're this close to, um, man, you got, I don't know if you can see this, this is pretty bad. Uh, what, what you, to be a decent detective, you go and do something like this, and 
it's like, oh man, he he roots for him, but he just he's disappoint like he's disappointing him. Just, There's like yeah. a father son quality yeah. oh, to their relationship so for sure. It's, it's like so it good. literally is like the I'm not mad, I'm disappointed dad. You and know? then he has such a switch when he realizes why he punched him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and and they don't have to have like some big conversation. Just like good writing, just that one one line. Like what would Holt say in his slick way yeah. to let him know? I'm on your side. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I understand. Yeah. That's so uh, good. It's so touching. So yeah, I, I love this one. This is my. This, this was. Uh, this this went the next step for me. Yeah. And, yeah. In yeah. terms of like, yeah, it's not just a clever comedy anymore about. Um, it's not just a clever comedy about you know cops and then being like really smart and how they write it and clever, mm-hmm. you know like it's all there still here in this one episode. But then to get to the next beat where you can really have. Uh, like a, like a strong emotion associated to it. It's always had the heart, but to really ha- like tug at the feels. Yeah. I'm like, damn, that, that yeah. that's the next step for me. <laughs> yeah. To touch on some emotional truth in the process. Yeah. yeah. It really is is special. Yeah, it's special. All right, guys, leave your thoughts down below. Sorry for whenever <laughs> this gets temporarily pulled. Enjoy it while it's like, here. I say this in the videos. And you're like, yeah, oh, you're right. I guess you're. <laughs> Who's this person manually claiming it's going be like, oh, shit, you're right. Yeah, let me unblock this. You follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're just sticklers for protocol. They're just yeah. like, we have to claim you. You have to dispute it, and then we'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> so silly. All right, guys. Thank you for being here. Talk to you soon.